The One Minute Manager by Kenneth Blanchard and Spencer Johnson. 1981. In a nutshell, clarity about goals saves a huge amount of energy that can be deployed productively in other areas. A young man searches all over the world for an example of a great manager. He wants to work for one and learn how to become one, but most of the workplaces he has seen do not provide any great inspiration. He meets hard-nosed managers who get things done, but whom the staff don't much like, and pleasant managers who love their staff but don't pay enough attention to the bottom line. Could there exist a manager who combines the best qualities of each? The young man hears about someone who seems to fit the bill, ironically in a nearby town. To his surprise, this manager agrees to see him right away and talk about how he manages his people. So begins the allegory of the one-minute manager. You're to be forgiven for being wary of a method of managing people that purports to take only one minute. Can it really work? Sales figures for the one-minute manager suggest that managers dream of spending less time on staff motivation and problems and will grasp at anything that suggests a way out, or there must actually be something to this style of management. The Way of the One-Minute Manager there are three secrets of, or elements to, one-minute management. Agree on goals, no more than half a dozen, with staff members. Make sure that each goal is written on a separate piece of paper. This is one-minute goal setting. From this point on, staff know exactly what's expected of them and will rarely come to the boss with problems. They know they are hired to solve them. Staff should reread the goals frequently as a means of ensuring that performance matches expectations. They should also provide detailed records of progress for the managers. This is not so that the manager can breathe down their neck, but so that he or she can catch them doing something right. This allows for one-minute praisings, which provide immediate and specific positive feedback on actions undertaken. If a person has the skills to do something right, and it's not done right, the manager will provide a one-minute reprimand. This stern rebuke is of the action or behavior, not the person, and the manager will express consternation that it's not up to the staff member's usual high standards. After the reprimand, the manager reminds the person how much they're valued. The second part of the story attempts to explain why one-minute management works. One-minute goal-setting works because the number one motivator of people is feedback on results. We like to know how we're doing, and if we're doing well, we feel good. The one-minute manager has a plaque on the wall reading, Take a minute, look at your goals, look at your performance, see if your behavior matches your goals. Simple, but effective. One-minute praisings are also effective for motivational reasons. It's rare to find someone who knows how to do everything well from day one, you have to put some effort into training. So the key to training someone to do a new task is, in the beginning, to catch them doing something approximately right until they can eventually learn to do it exactly right. Discipline doesn't work with people who aren't secure in what they're doing. Only encouragement does. Praise gets them moving in the right direction. Though it need take up very little time, praise is the fuel that can drive a whole enterprise. One-minute reprimands work because they're the fairest form of feedback for correcting below-par performance. 
Since goals have been set and expectations are so transparent, the person will usually see when the reprimand is fair. The managers respect it because he or she has spoken the simple truth. As the reprimand is quick and focused on specific action, not the person themselves, there's less bad feeling. When the encounter's over, it always ends on a good note and can be soon forgotten or even made light of. Managing to lead. The very simplicity of one-minute management will deem it suspect in some people's eyes, yet it's little more than the application of efficiency to workplace interpersonal relations. The philosophy of taking very little time to get big results comes from a nuts-and-bolts appreciation of human nature. The story's one-minute manager admits that management cannot always be performed in a minute. It's more a symbol of the idea that managing people can be much less complicated than we think. There's no need for endless sessions to discuss objectives and problems. Some time needs to be invested in establishing goals, but after that, the contact between boss and subordinate can be minimal. Consider some successful examples of this way of managing people. Investor Warren Buffett employs business managers whose small number of objectives are so clear that he rarely needs to meet with them. They get on with the job, and send him periodic reports. Antarctic explorer Sir Ernest Shackleton was so respected by his crew members because they knew exactly what was expected of them. If they were reprimanded for anything, there was always a clear and rational reason. More recently, GE boss Jack Welch explained his management style as kicks and hugs which were meted out or given only according to strictly outlined, previously mapped out goals. This didn't create a climate of fear. If people did not measure up, they could blame no one but themselves. One further thought. The ideas in the one-minute manager aren't merely for the work environment. They can apply to many areas of personal relations. To be tough and nice for instance, should be the goal of any parent. Final Comments After decades of weighty tomes on management science and organizational behavior, the one-minute manager came as a breath of fresh air for managers. It may seem simplistic, but it was firmly based on the latest findings in behavioral psychology. Blanchard and Johnson's genius was to dress up this knowledge in the more attractive form of a story. With today's flatter organizational structures and emphasis on working in teams, it could be argued that the book is less relevant. It seems to express an older, hierarchical, and sexist model of the workplace, the boss and his subordinates. What's more, today we enjoy making the distinction between mere managers and leaders— while the latter inspires, the former simply manages. Yet true leaders, as the examples above suggest, will find it difficult to get anywhere without some basic people management skills. They will seek to create relaxed workplaces in which people have all the time they need to pursue important goals. This sense of relaxed purpose arises because everyone knows exactly what their role is. There exist both transparency and clarity of purpose. Kenneth Blanchard and Spencer Johnson Blanchard has a B.A. from Cornell University in Government and Philosophy, an M.A. from Colgate University in Sociology and Counseling, and a Ph.D. in Administration and Management. He is the author of a widely used academic text, Management of Organizational Behavior, Utilizing Human Resources, and is currently Professor of Leadership and Organizational Behavior at the University of Massachusetts Amherst. 
He also runs his own corporate training and development company. Johnson's biography is at the end of Chapter 27. Over 750,000 copies of The One Minute Manager are in print. Its success has spawned spin-off titles including Leadership and The One Minute Manager, The One Minute Salesperson, and Putting The One Minute Manager to Work.